All economic signals are now pointing to an imminent recession and the Federal Reserve is slowly beginning to realise the mistakes they have made, now showing clear signs of panic with their decisions. With multiple tried and tested recession indicators now flashing red and numerous large corporate institutions also giving warnings to investors on the changing consumer behaviour that they are seeing, the economy could be in big trouble very soon. So the Federal Reserve recently just cut interest rates for the first time in over four years by 50 basis points, more than the 25 basis points that many were expecting. But despite this larger than expected rate cut, Jerome Powell reassured everyone in his speech saying, we have an economy that is growing at a solid pace and the US economy is basically fine. If you look at forecasts or talk to companies, they think 2025 should be a good year too. But the economy is clearly not fine, and the Federal Reserve FOMC members know this very well, judging by their sudden change in tune in their box plot estimates for where rates will be by the end of 2024. Just a few months ago in June, 11 out of the 19 members projected that rates would not need to drop by more than 25 basis points by the end of 2024, with four of them saying that rates would not need to drop at all and the remaining eight members projected that rates would need to drop by 50 basis points in total across the entire remainder of the year. Fast forward three months, with the exception of one member, every single other member of the FOMC unanimously decided to go for a 50 basis point drop in one go. And all members besides two believe that there will be at least another 25 basis points worth of rate cuts in 2024, with the majority actually thinking that there will be another 50 basis points worth of cuts. There is a stark contrast between the projections now compared to just three months ago, which suggests that the Federal Reserve are seeing things in the data that suggest the economy is not actually fine at all, like Jerome Powell is telling everyone it is, and in fact additional emergency rate cuts may be needed if we are to have any chance of a soft landing. The unemployment rate continuing to climb at quite a rapid pace is a good place to start as the trend that we are seeing start to emerge does suggest that the health of the economy is about to get much much worse. From the lows in April of 2023 of 3.4%, the unemployment rate has climbed to 4.2% in just over a year as more and more companies are freezing hiring and also making layoffs. This jump of 0.8% to 4.2% may seem like a fairly small number still on the face of it. However, relative to where it was just a year ago, this is a 23.5% jump in the number of people that are unemployed. And the most concerning thing about this data is that unemployment is now starting to look like the textbook pattern of what normally happens throughout all of history every single time that unemployment has surged before. You see, the unemployment rate is a metric that takes the escalator down but the elevator up. And this means that aside from minor fluctuations month to month, we generally see the unemployment rate trend downwards year after year until it reaches a low point and then something in the economy breaks and all of a sudden it will rocket upwards, often by multiple percentage points in a relatively short space of time. If we look back at the last two economic recessions, the 2008 global financial crisis as well as the early 2000s dot-com bubble, we can see this exact pattern play out. Unemployment in both time periods gradually trickled downwards during the years in the run-up to the big recession event happening. Then when the recession hits, all of a sudden we see a big spike in the unemployment rate as companies get into difficulty and millions are laid off and cannot find any more work. And if we go all the way back to the 1950s, we can see that this pattern remains true. Unemployment will almost never just trickle upwards a little bit and then come back down. It will almost always shoot up in one big burst. So with this in mind, the pattern that we are beginning to see in the unemployment rate data on this long-term chart of the unemployment rate is beginning to mirror what has always happened in history. Of course, like always, this time it could be different, but the historic data certainly does suggest that given the recent surge that we have seen in the unemployment rate, this surge won't be stopping or slowing down anytime soon, and the unemployment rate is likely to be a lot higher this time next year. And the FOMC members will no doubt be aware of this trend too, and so this more aggressive stance on rate cuts is likely to be bearing this data in mind. 
And while Jerome Powell may tell us in his speech that companies are positive about the future, this is just not true at all based on the data that companies are releasing in their earnings report as well as in their future projections in profit and revenue. Just the other week, FedEx reported very disappointing earnings, suffering a miss of 1.53% for revenue and a whopping 24.5% miss on earnings per share, while also cutting their guidance for the remainder of 2024 as well as for next year in 2025. This spooked investors and caused the stock to crater by over 15% in one day, but what was perhaps even more of a red flag was some of the comments that were made by the CEO on the earnings call as they were pretty damning on not just FedEx as a company but also to the overall economy in general. He did say, the soft industrial economy is clearly weighing on the business to business volumes and it was definitely much weaker than we expected and that this has led to reduced demand for priority services and increased demand for deferred services. He also commented on the Fed's rate cut decision, saying, The magnitude of the Fed rate cuts yesterday signals the weakness of the current environment. Now, we are not assuming a significant comeback on the industrial environment in the rest of the year. Now, FedEx is seen by many as a bellwether for the US and global economies, so when businesses are shipping less packages to other businesses and customers, while also opting for the slower and cheaper delivery more often in the interest of saving money, it is not a good sign. And numerous other giant corporations are also showing warning signs in their earnings, and this does include Apple, who are seeing weak demand for the new iPhone 16 and are clocking full-year revenue numbers lower than two years ago. Also, McDonald's, who are missing revenue expectations and are warning that customers are under financial pressure, so much so that they are extending discount meal deal offers. As well as Nike, Airbnb and a number of other companies with underwhelming earnings who are lowering their future outlooks. Now, when companies struggle, they look to reduce costs where possible, which often starts off with canning projects or future expansion and subsequently making fewer new hires to manage headcount. And if we look at the total job openings, we can see that it does continue to plummet at quite a pace and is now almost back down to pre-pandemic levels. A recent survey of CEOs found that companies plan on pulling back from hiring over the next six months and expect a slowdown in sales. And of course, if companies are really struggling, then they will resort to making layoffs. And when we tie all of this together, companies that are showing signs of weakness, fewer job openings being posted because companies can't afford to hire, and the unemployment rate surging all at the same time, things are definitely not looking good. Another big red flag for the economy is the action that we are seeing on the yield curve, which has been inverted since the end of 2022, but has been sharply reversing and is now no longer inverted, which is a pivotal moment in the economic cycle. This is because this sharp reversal is the exact pattern observed in the yield curve moments before we have seen a major recession take place across all historic data since 1970. We all know that the yield curve inverting is the signal that a recession is coming, but this rapid reversal upwards and uninversion has always marked the final moments before a recessionary period has been entered. And we can see that this is exactly what happened in the global financial crisis, the dot-com bubble and also the 1990s recession. Now, the Federal Reserve is clearly very aware of all of this damning economic data, painting a concerning picture on where the economy is heading and have taken desperate measures with a 50 basis point rate cut to try and reduce the damage as much as possible. This is what makes things even more confusing when we look at the future economic projections given by the Federal Reserve board members. They are telling us that they think GDP is going to keep ticking upwards nicely every year and that the unemployment rate is just going to magically stop going up now for 2024 and also 2025 before coming back down in 2026 and beyond. Meanwhile, the Fed expects PCE inflation to stay at 2.3% in 2024 before heading sharply back down to 2%, which is literally the target rate that the Fed aims for. Now, these are clearly extremely optimistic and, quite honestly, delusional projections from the Federal Reserve. They are trying to tell the public one thing to keep people from panicking, but are acting in a completely different way to this and are very clearly panicking themselves about the recent data that they are seeing. 
The weakening economy is already starting to have a severe impact on banks who could be in big trouble soon from rising loan delinquencies as people simply cannot afford to pay back their debt. And the problem is getting so bad that banks have started to give out warnings to investors. My previous video goes into more detail on this topic and you can check it out by clicking on screen right now. Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe as that does help out the channel a lot. And thanks a lot for watching.